fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Away! is a boy of ten. He busts right in the robber's den and gets his man because he knows he's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got gold power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios. 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 That makes sense. Try Cheerios, the wonderful oat cereal that's shaped like a little letter O. And you'll agree. You like that delicious toasted oat flavor, and Cheerios is ready to eat. Just pour out a big bowl full, add good fresh milk, dig in, and start getting your go power. Because a Cheerios breakfast is full of vitamins, proteins, and minerals. And those are the good things you need to help build red blood, healthy bodies, and strong muscles. So enjoy your breakfast every day with delicious Cheerios and milk, and get that good go power. Then folks will say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Enough there. Jess and Clara Stoddard sold their farm in Ohio and started west to join a wagon train scheduled to go to California from Wichita. But they reached there two days after the caravan had left. I'm sorry, Clara. It's all my fault. If I hadn't gotten lost back there, that's yes, last... Yes, never that... mind that now. It's past. You heard what the man at the store told us. The train's going to stop at Dodge City a few days before going on. Now, if we hurry, we'll catch up with it then. So let's get going. Oh, yes, yes. Get up there. Come on. Clara, we left Wichita hours ago. And now we're going through the wildest country we've seen yet. This can't be the Chisholm Trail. I don't think it is either, Jess. There's no sign of anybody passing along here at all. We're lost again, that's what. Clara, I must be the worst Jess. driver. Jess, oh, Jess, look, riding down here. Clara, it's an Indian and a, a masked man. Oh, oh. Jess, Jess, they're going to kill us. It's a hold-up. Hold it, hold it. Hold it. Hold it. I'll protect you, Clara. I'll be frightened. Hal and I are not outlaws. See, we've no intention of using our guns. But, but that mask... Believe me, I wear it for personal, not criminal reasons. Well, doggone, never heard of such a thing. The couple, forgetting their initial fright, told their story. When they finished, the masked man said, Tom and I are camped in the hills above here. But if you'll let us, we'll be glad to lead you to the trail and head you in the right direction. The Stoddards, after a whispered conference, agreed to follow the Lone Ranger and Tonto. A short time later, the horseman and the wagon turned off the road and headed south toward the Chisholm Trail. Come on, Silver. Get up there. At that moment, half a day's journey to the west in the town of Carryville, Fritz Emden, a deputy, burst into Sheriff Jim Wagner's office. Sheriff! Hey. I just saw Luke Murdoch. Luke Murdoch? Where? Across the street behind Tex Carter's cafe. Must have left his horse in the bushes back of the place because he was skulking around on foot. Looks as if he's trying to sneak into the cafe. Where will I get my other gun? Fritz, you ain't sure it's Murdoch? Been more than a week since he escaped the jail in Dodge City, you know. Oh, it's Murdoch, all right. I was at his trial in Dodge City when they sentenced him to be hanged. Well, let's get after him, man. You got your guns? Yeah. Oh, uh, I'd have tried to take him by myself. Well, never mind. We'll take him together. Come on, Fritz. See, Sheriff, there he is, peeking through the rear window into the cafe. Yeah, 
That's Murdoch, all right. Get ready for it. I'm ready. Go on, Sheriff. His back's turned. Yeah. All right, Luke Murdoch. Get your hands up. What for? I'm not Murdoch. You're crazy. Hold it, Luke. I've seen your pictures on posters so many times I couldn't miss. Rich, put the handcuffs on him. Stick out your arms, Luke. Come on, here. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we're on tight, Sheriff. Then let's get him into a cell. When we do that, I'll arrange to get a stagecoach, private, and we'll take him back to Dodge City. Move, Luke. It was late afternoon when the Lone Ranger, Toto, and the Stoddards reached the Chisholm Trail. Oh, 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 Here you are. You head west on this trail. Stay on it and you can get lost again. We sure are grateful, stranger. It'll be dark within a few hours. I suggest that you set up camp then and rest the animals. You make better time when you start out again. We'll do that, stranger. Well, thanks again and goodbye. Adios. Adios. Get up, man. Get up. Meanwhile, in Carryville, the one topic of conversation was the arrest of the notorious Luke Murdoch. That evening, at a time when Jess and Clara Stoddard were stopping for the night in the hills a few miles from the town, Sheriff Wagner spoke to a group of men outside his office. Well, it's all set. The stagecoach people are going to set up a private coach for me so as I can take Murdoch to Dodge City. Pritch and I are going to take him, and he'll be shackled up like no prisoner ever was. Luke Murdoch. <laughs> Man, was he surprised when we took him so easy. There was a stranger in town who stood at the edge of the crowd and listened to Sheriff Wagner. A short time later, he walked into Tex Carter's cafe and looked around the place. His eyes lighted on a girl dressed in a frilly red dress, the entertainer Rosalie Heath. She was sitting alone at a table in the corner when the man sat down beside her. The girl's face turned white with fear. Dave, are you crazy coming here like this? Haven't you heard? About them taking Luke? Sure I heard. I even saw them put him in jail. Now, why did the fool come here in broad daylight? Why didn't he wait till tonight and meet me like you were supposed to do? Oh, he wanted to see me, I think. He knew I lived upstairs. Well, never I... mind guessing. Go upstairs and change into traveling clothes, Rosalie. What? I have a plan. Rosalie, you're a good actress, and you're going to help me. The... Now, don't ask questions. Just get upstairs, like I said. I'll tell you what you have to do later. The man was Dave Foster, an outlaw. Fifteen minutes later, he and Rosalie, now dressed in traveling clothes, met in the shadows outside the cafe. Foster outlined his plan and ended saying, and The only place I'm wanted is in Texas, so nobody knows who I am around here. That's why I'll be able to do my part without having to worry. But it's an awful chance to take Dave. Suppose they don't believe my story. It's up to you to make them. Handle things like I told you, and this will be easier than you think. It was near midnight when Sheriff Wagner and Fritz Emden, the man who had first seen Luke Murdoch, prepared to take the prisoner to Dodge City. Murdoch was shackled, wrists and ankles and was pushed right, into the seat on, of the stagecoach as if he were a sack of grain. As the driver climbed up to his seat atop the coach, two figures suddenly appeared from the shadows, a girl and a man. The girl was sobbing violently, and the man was trying to console her. They walked directly to the sheriff. Sheriff! Hmm? Oh, Sheriff, you must help me. You simply must. Uh, what's the matter, Mary? My father. He's dying in Dodge City. You know, that's too bad, Young fellow, Sheriff, I don't... I just arrived in town from Dodge City. Miss Heath is my sister. Oh, is that you? Oh, uh, you work as a singer in Tex Carter's place, don't you, Mayor? Yes. Sheriff, yeah. they said at the stagecoach station that you were going there now. We thought maybe you might take us with you. Oh, Sheriff, you must. Your prisoners chained hands and feet will not be in the way. There's plenty of room in the coach. Now, look, I'll help you guard him. I'll help oh, you. Oh, please. You couldn't be heartless and not let me go to my father. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> oh, all right. Get in. I'll, I'll be glad to help, Mary. Oh, thank you, Sheriff. Hey, Fritz. Yeah. Let the young lady and gentleman get in there. All right, come on. Go on, Miss. You first. <laughs> Two miles out of Carryville, the girls sitting opposite Sheriff Wagner and Deputy Fritz Emden glanced at their prisoner, Luke Murdoch, 
who sat impassive between the lawmen. Suddenly, the girl gasped. Oh, oh, I'm going to faint. Rosie, watch her. She's falling to the floor. Fritz. Yeah, I'll get her. Here, miss. Wait. Here. Hey, Fritz, watch her. Here's a gun. Yeah, for Fritz's head. There. Where are you? Sit back, Sheriff, or I'll drill you. Forgive me. This, this is a joke. It's death if you make a move. Stay, take it gun. Sure. Yeah, we... I'll take both those irons, Sheriff. <laughs> Yeah, Rosalie, I have them. <laughs> well, Luke, we did it. You pearls are Luke Murdoch. <laughs> Dave's my partner, stupid. And Rosalie's... Nice work, Rosalie. Luke, we have to get those irons off you. I'll take the sheriff's keys. Hey, we're crowded in here this way. Sheriff, tell the driver to stop. Luke, we'll get these hombres out of the coach and take it for ourselves. Yeah, good idea. Sheriff, I said tell the driver to stop if you no, don't... No, wait, wait. Don't use your gun. I'll tell him. Stay up there. Stop the coach a minute. Stop the coach. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. When Bill's at bat, the kids all shout, you can't strike that slugger out. He gets a hit because he knows he's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got gold power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. That's a mighty good idea for you. Just make sure you eat a big bowl of Cheerios and milk every breakfast and you'll get Go Power, too. Because a Cheerios breakfast is loaded with proteins, vitamins, and minerals. The very things that help build healthy bodies, strong bones, good red blood, and muscles. Why, they'd be the sort of breakfast you'd go for even if they didn't taste so good. And they do taste delicious. Cheerios are a real oat cereal, already cooked with that delicious toasted oat flavor. So that's for you. Swell-tasting Cheerios and milk for Go Power. Eat them every morning and you'll hear... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. When the coach stopped, Dave Foster stepped onto the road. Rosalie, help Luke onto the road. Dave stepped to the side, keeping his gun leveled as Rosalie helped the shackled Murdoch from the coach. There you are, Luke. At that moment, the coach driver, curious, leaned over from his seat. Hey, why are we stopping? What's going on there? Dave, get that hombre down. Shoot him if he doesn't. Huh? So hold up. Get out! Get out of there! Before the startled outlaws could react, and before Dave Foster could lead Sheriff Wagner from the coach, the driver started his horses, and Wagner fell back into the coach. Murdoch was frantic. Dave, stop them. The sheriff's there. I can't see him now. He's turning that bend. Uh, you stupid ox. You should have got him off the seat before you did anything else. Oh, Luke, I didn't think. I didn't uh, know. Do you have the keys. It's dark here, but get the irons off my wrists and ankles. Come on, make it fast. do now? They'll go back to Carryville and get a posse. They circle around. While the they're doing that, we'll get out of this. Where are we head, Luke? We need horses. We'll get horses somehow. Right now we have guns and reason to vamoose from here. I know the country around here. You come with me, Rosie. Dave, follow behind. Keep watch. Luke Murdoch, wise in the ways of covering a trail, even in the darkness, led the girl and Dave Foster by a devious route into the hills north of the main trail. They had trudged for hours with still no signs of pursuit when suddenly Murdoch stopped. Hey, Rosie, Dave, look over there. Standing all by itself. A wagon? Yeah, the covered wagon and horses. Nobody seems to be on guard, Luke. So I see. They must be sleeping inside. All right, get your gun out, Dave. Yeah. This is just what we wanted. Oh, 
Jess and Clara Stoddard, asleep inside their canvas-covered wagon, heard no noise until Luke Murdoch clambered into the vehicle. When Jess started to rise, he looked into the muzzle of a gun. All right, mister, just lie there. You too, lady. Oh, my. What, what are you going to do? If you stay nice and quiet, nothing. If you try to make a ruckus, I'll shoot you. The outlaws and the girl bound and gagged Jess and Clara Stoddard and partially covered them with the blankets the immigrants had used for sleeping purposes. Then Luke and Dave Foster hitched the horses to the wagon, and Luke gave instructions. We're going to take a chance and drive east to Wichita. They may not think we'd do a thing like that. But suppose somebody sees us on the road. Nobody's going to, because we're going to stay off the main trail. A few miles north of here is an old trail the Indians used to travel years and years ago. Nobody knows it now. But I do. We go east on that road? Yeah. It'll be bumpy, but safer. <laughs> and if we do meet anybody, which I don't think we will, why, we're just three poor, disappointed critters heading back east because we couldn't make a go of it out of here. <laughs> Rosie, honey, you'll be my wife. And Dave, you'll be my brother. <laughs> Lone Ranger and Tonto had broken camp, and now, an hour after dawn, they prepared to head westward through the hills. They left the trail and traveled along the crest of a hill that looked down on the path where they had met the Stoddards the previous day. They had been riding a short time, when on the path below, they saw the outlines of a covered wagon in the distance. Tonto, heading this way. Another wagon. Keeps strange. What can this one be doing up here, away from the trail? Toto, that wagon looks like... Wait, we get behind these high bushes. Come on. Come, Scott. Come, Papa. Oh, oh, Why you use field glasses, Kimasami? I want to make sure of something. Uh, yes, it's their wagon. Uh, whose wagon? The Stoddards. That is their wagon and their horses. But the Stoddards aren't in the front seat. Who we'll drive it, then? Man, and there's a woman beside him. Hello, we ride down the road where it makes a turn. Come, sir. Come, Scott. Come, on. Come, oh, 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 fella. This is a good spot, Toto, here behind the bushes. Uh, you're not going to ride on the trail, Kimosabi? No, not yet. Uh, you think maybe something happened to Mr. and Mrs. Stoddard? That's what I want you to find out. Stop the wagon directly in front of these bushes and start a conversation. I'll listen from here. Uh, what me ask them, Kimasabi? For one thing, don't mention the Stoddards. Let whoever's driving explain about them. You merely ask what they're doing on this path, and they could be driving down the Chisholm Trail. Yeah, they're good. Driving over the bumpy ground on the hill path made progress slow for yeah. the escaping outlaws. Murdoch drove on until he came to the bend in the road. There, he brought the wagon to a stop because the road was blocked by an Indian. Tonto greeted the couple in the driver's seat. Uh, how? How yourself? What do you want, Injun? Well, me see you come this way. Me think maybe you're lost. Yeah, lost? Us? Why do you think that? You drive wagon. This is not wagon trail. Wagon trail to south, many miles. You have this wagon long time? Eh? Uh, what do you mean by that? Let well, me ask if you have horses and wagon long time. Well, certainly. We've owned them for years. Dave Foster, inside the wagon, moved to the front behind the shoulder of Luke Murdoch. Luke, don't waste time on that redskin. Shoot him, it'll be better that way. If he meets up with anybody later, he's liable to say he saw us. So stop talking and kill him. Foster, his back to the tailgate, did not see the Lone Ranger emerge from the underbrush and move to the rear of the wagon. Luke, if you don't shoot him, I'll do it. The Lone Ranger almost noiselessly lifted himself into the wagon as Murdoch spoke. Hold your horses, Dave. Engine, why'd you ask how long we had this wagon? The Lone Ranger, now standing inside, answered. Because it belongs hey, to what people we know. These people lying back here. Why, you... Foster turned, reaching for his gun, but the Lone Ranger grabbed him, I... pushing him toward the driver's seat. Take that gun, Foster. Luke, it's a mask, you man. Want... Shoot him. Yeah, I can't. Dave's in the way. Hey, turn him around and let me get a shot at him. As Murdoch turned around, Tonto started toward the wagon. Luke, watch out. The Indian has a gun. He's coming under the wagon. What? All right, no, Red's no, kill. No, no, no. Oh, my arm. You're shot. Lady, you do not reach for gun. Me take it. You, you shot him. You let me take your gun, too. Foster, drop no. that gun, I said. Drop it, my back. You're breaking it. I'll break your jaw now. 
You knocked him out. He should be glad I didn't shoot him. Tonto, get that girl onto the road and tie her arms. Ah, get down to the road, lady. All right, but don't touch me. I'll get down. Oh, my arm. Tonto will fix that, Murdoch. How do you know me? Your picture's in every sheriff's office in the West. I'll tell you how I know Dave Foster later. Tonto, bandage him, then tie him up. Ah, me tie girl first. Oh, my arm. Now I'll release the started. The Lone Ranger and Toto, with Murdoch, Foster, and the girl tied up in the rear of the wagon, led the way once more to the Chisholm Trail. The Stoddards were in the driver's seat. The Lone Ranger saw the approaching horsemen. Oh, 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 oh. It's a posse. I see the badges shining on their shirt fronts. Toto, ride ahead and tell them what's happened. Tell them we have Murdoch and Foster. Get them up, Toto. Sheriff Wagner and his posse made prisoners of Murdoch, Foster, and Rosalie Heath. The Lone Ranger told his story and concluded... There's a price on Foster's head down in Texas, Sheriff. Sure. It was too hot for him there, I imagine. That's why he came up here and joined his one-time partner, Murdoch. Well, you can be sure they'll not get away again. I'll take my entire posse as guards on the way to Dodge City. Will you see, too, that Mr. and Mrs. Stoddard arrive there safely so they can catch up with the wagon train? I sure will. We'll leave you then. Goodbye, Mr. and Mrs. Stoddard. I'm glad things have worked out all right for you. Good luck. Thank you. Good Let's go, Tonto. One, two, three. Oh, stop. That masked hombre, he had me sent to jail once in Texas. I knew who he was as soon as I heard his voice. I know Claire and I were sure glad to hear it, lying in the back of that wagon. <laughs> it must have sounded like the voice of doom to Foster, though. Huh, Foster? Never mind the jokes. All I know is there's no sense being an outlaw out here. Not as long as there's an hombre like the Lone Ranger. Don't ever doubt it. Champions are made, not born. You can get there. For example, take the story of Wheaties champion Stan Musial of the St. Louis Cardinals. Young Stan was willed no claim to fame, no magic way to learn the game. He had to sweat and give his all, learning to field and hit that ball. Sure, Wheaties was his breakfast call. Today they call him Stan the Man, still and always a Wheaties fan. Stan Musial has been powering up with Wheaties right along, 19 years. Good for Stan good for you. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Now watch Stan belt that ball. Hey, hey, hey. He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. <laughs> a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.